Greetings to all, Susan's family, friends, and all of our nursing and interprofessional uh, colleagues. I'm truly honored to be here today. I'm Barbie Dossie from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and had the privilege of knowing Susan Luck for over 35 years. We met in 1987, and we were instant soul sisters. We had many adventures together, the most recent being uh, as co-founders of the International Nurse Coach Association, followed in 2019 as co-founders of the In Integrative Nurse Coach Academy with our dear colleagues, Karen Avino and uh, Ronnie Kanka. I will say that Susan is one of the, she still is, <laughs> one of the most love-filled, compassionate women I have ever known. She was a bright beacon of wisdom and hope, oh, and bright light, and a gorgeous smile and infectious laughter, and I can hear that laughter right now. Frequently, when we were working, we would take ourselves very seriously. We wanted to do such good work and go really deep, and we would work and work and work, and then all of a sudden, she would just burst out laughing because we were taking ourselves so seriously. And then it would turn my tickle box on. Her tickle box was already on. And it would go on and on and on. And we'd say, OK, let's get back to work. And then we'd start working. And we would try to go deeper again. And then she would get her tickle box turned on. And we did this all the time. And then we would frequently just sit and laugh, not about anything in particular, but just to enjoy each other's uh, company. I think Susan is, is, still is, was a living uh, example of the ancient archetype of the heroine. A heroine is someone who seeks a journey, seeks a new journey, a new path, goes out on it to discover, knowing that there are going to be dangers, not knowing what's going to present, that there are going to be barriers, and still staying steady, going out there and stepping into the water and going deeper and deeper. And then she would come to a place and she would recognize, wow, this is just so amazing. I think it's going to improve what we're trying to do here. And then she had the ability to come back and carefully and selectively begin to share because she had a vast amount of new information. Susan had many incarnations as a nurse clinician, researcher, author, uh, anthropologist, and she would take a deep dive in many different ways. And this is why she was always on the cutting edge. And this is why early in her career, she was awarded the 1987 uh, Holistic Nurse of the Year by the uh, Holist American Holistic Nurses Association. Susan was an example of how to live a spirit-filled life with intention and purpose. You know, psychologists tell us that most people are through learning by about age 20, 25, and then all of a sudden they think they know what it is, and they've got this belief, and they have these blinders on, and they keep on going deeper trying to tell you how to do it and what to do. Susan would go, hey, <laughs> let's take it off. Let's get out of this box. What are we going to do? How can we make this better? And she was always doing this. And the reason she was able to do this, because she had a way of going to a both end way of thinking, not an either or. She also recognized the vast many patterns of knowing as well as unknowing. And she had the ability to be with it and to carefully select what she needed to share. I also want to say that Susan had a teaching style that was her own. It was unique. And we were always on the edge of our chair because she had such an interesting way of putting together and she had such an authentic way of doing it. And it was always new and rich and she just was so gracious with what she shared. So I want to close just by saying that I believe that Susan is in a, a place of peace. I want to say a deep gratitude to, to all the close family and friends that journeyed with Susan this last three or four years as she tried to get healthier. And even though she transitioned, she died in a healing place and a healing space because of these friends. Now we have to let her go. And it is so hard.
I believe that our dear Susan is free right now. Susan is free and she is in a place that is bountiful for her. And we can always say that Susan is no longer in that location where she used to be. But we can carry her in our hearts always, which I will do. Susan is now wherever we are. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is a little strange not to see your faces, but I can imagine the number of you that are out there who have been touched by Susan's life, have been touched by the work of nurse coaching. And I welcome you and I'm grateful for Barbie's comments that we just listened to. I wanna say just a few things. Um, mostly, I would like to hear from you all, and we'll do that through the chat function as a way to have some kind of interactive time with each other. So I want to start with something that might be familiar to many of you, at least. I think all, all of you who have been in cohort four and beyond, I think that might be where we first read this beautiful poem called The Way It Is which was written by William Stafford, a poet laureate for this country. And um, this beautiful, simple poem was written about 26 days before he died. I read this in particular honor for Susan and her life called The Way It Is. There's a thread you follow it goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread, but it is hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt, or die, and you suffer and get old, nothing you do can stop time's unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. From my first phone call back in 2011 with Susan, which ended up being a two and a half hour long call that ended with a resounding yes to start Inca cohort four back in uh, 2012. And then continuing over the years as we grew from mentor and mentee to dear friends. Susan was a generous and creative weaver of threads between herself and others. Her threads were instrumental in weaving many of us together. I'm grateful for all the ways, seen and unseen, that Susan shared her many gifts, her insights, her brilliant mind, her big heart, and her strong voice to the world. Even though we would love to hear from each one of you, let's, let's try using this chat. And I see that Karen has already started writing some things in there. But let's use a chat as a way to interact a bit around our collective love and gratitude for Susan's life. So um, what is one thing that you're grateful for about Susan? What are you grateful for from your own lived experience of Susan's life and Susan's work? And if you, if you would keep it distilled into a few words or a phrase, you know, as nurse coaches, we practice uh, speaking essentially. <laughs> So um, please 
feel free to write some things in here. I'll read them aloud, probably not every one, but I'll read them aloud as uh, representing the words from many of us. And uh, think of them as, as blessings or as prayers that we're, we're delivering virtually, that we're sharing with each other. And most importantly, that we're sending out with deep love and appreciation to to Susan's shining spirit, wherever she is. I love the way Susan built our community of loving and caring like-minded people that still continues to remain together today. I'm so very grateful for Susan's passion and energy for the environment, for nurses, and the well being of all beings on this planet. Love and light to each of you from Long Island, New York. Let me, let me say names also. The first one was Karen, and the second was Christine Gilchrist. Pam Nelson says, Melson says, Susan inspired me to take nurse coaching to another level. I'm grateful for her pioneering spirit. Marie says, grateful for writings. Margaret, her positive energy that she shared with all. Judy, Susan's infectious laugh. Nicole, Susan was a badass. She spoke her mind with peace and intention. She always looked out for all of us like we were family. I consider her to be my big sister. Mary Elaine, my fond memories of the gift of Susan is her light, Smile and generous spirit. Fly high. Catherine, her insight and inspiration. Debbie, her smile and knowledge was contagious and fills my heart today and will continue to guide me as we seek to move the field of integrative health forward. Mary says, Susan's example of what presence meant in action. Mary Beth, thank you for doing this from cohort 28 grad. Her Zoom in lessons were heartfelt and inspiring. Udea, I'm so grateful for her friendship and mentorship. I will miss our tea time and never thought of the day we would not get together again. She was love. Claire, her beautiful smile and the beautiful aura of light that surrounded her. Annie, her teaching style and her authentic way of being. Janice, or Elle, is that Ellen? I've been touched deeply by Susan's kind, gentle listening skills as well as her beautiful joy-filled presence. Susan's warm smile and infectious laugh, her authenticity was visible and palpable, so generous in spirit. I'll probably read about 10 more. I'm so grateful, Lindsay says, for Susan's incredible passion and presence. This truly has changed the way I practice and continues to inspire me. Chad, her compassionately fiery spirit. Amen to that, Chad. Jackie, I love sharing a room at Harmony Hill with Susan, where we talk late into the night, giggling about past and present loves. <laughs> Toyoko, her beautiful smile and a big heart inspired me. Mera, forgive my mispronunciation if I did. I loved her ability to be present in her wisdom and be the much needed change maker this world needs. Mm. Sarah, I love the way Susan helped lift up other women. Yeah. Audrey, I appreciate her inclusiveness, supportive, encouraging love and guidance. Leslie says deep gratitude for Susan's passion for nursing and global health. Lindsay, I'm so grateful for Susan's incredible passion and presence. This truly has changed the way I practice. I think I read that one before. Terry, Susan has a unique gift of helping you bring your true self to your practice. Anna, I always remember when I called the Inca phone, Susan answered as she was driving. She pulled over to have a conversation with me. 
Judy. She had a laughter in her voice even when she wasn't laughing. Betsy, I always remember her lecture on the environment in cohort five in New York City. Caroline, Susan loved big, and that is my lifelong learning lesson. Karen, Susan's enthusiasm was contagious and she was a bright light. Bob and I loved her passion for this endangered planet. Susan gave us hope and so much love. She was inclusive and always pulled people together from all over the world. Yeah, she was a weaver, wasn't she? A weaver of people. Anna, Susan called me when I was considering joining Inca. She helped me make the decision. She guided me into the next chapter of my life. And for that, I'm grateful. She was a joy to be around. I'll just read a few more. They keep coming and I'm so tempted to keep going, but I think uh, Ronnie, I'll, I'll just read a few more here. Diana, compassionate and loving friend. Maureen, I recall her strength, her vision, her passion and excitement for life, nursing and nurse coaching. She was an inspiration as far as planetary health and our relationship with the earth and all living things. She had the best smile and hair. She never aged. <laughs> Peggy and Joe, her vision, tenacity, and passion for promoting the health of the planet and the people. And Gretchen, presence, and joy in action, always a treasure to be with her. So we'll leave that up. Uh, there are many more wonderful ones and just uh, in the honoring of time, I, I won't be reading them all, but thank you all for your, your words of blessing and, and prayer. And I hope in whatever mysterious way this works <laughs> that that Susan feels as she is among us right now. She feels the love and the respect, the gratitude, the honoring as we, we lift her up, her legacy and her life. So thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ron, Ronnie, as Susan called me. Um, the, I am the Director of Operations for the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy, International Nurse Coach Association. Thank you all for being with us tonight to honor a truly remarkable person. Uh, I met Susan back in 2011 at the University of Miami uh, we were, I worked there and she, uh, she was a faculty member and also an attendee of a clinical nutrition program that we had there. We communicated really just professionally and uh, my father soon after uh, passed away and Susan saw that I was struggling to keep a job, um, you know, really show up and she said, hey, you know, um, I have a position available at Inca, and if you'd like to work from home, um, you know, there's a spot available for you. So I thought about it for a bit, and uh, I took the position, and probably one of the smarter things I've done in my life. Um, she, you know, even with everything going on, uh, Susan had a unique ability to really see somebody's potential, even when they couldn't see it themselves. Um, so for the last 10 years, I was kind of her go-to guy for many, many different areas. Um, you know, everything from Inca to Earth Rose, which I'll talk about in uh, shortly, uh, to, you know, just venting about family, friends, work, uh, life. You know, she really, uh, for like one of the first times it was someone who didn't treat me like I was just a kid, um, you know. <clears throat> uh, 
And one of the other areas that Susan would come to me for was you know, technical support. Um, I was going through some pictures, trying to get some inspiration of uh, you know what, what to say tonight because there's just so much. Um, and most, a lot of her pictures are just you know there's a remote, there's a router, there's a printer. <laughs> She's like, you know, what do I do with this? What if, <laughs> um, so you know, but technical support was probably the only area that Susan needed help with, and she was determined and strong and driven to really get anything that she set her mind to accomplished. <sighs> One such area and her passion, I think most close to her would, ag would agree with it was uh, environmental health. And she really was an activist advocate from, you know, local in her local community here in Surfside uh, to helping uh, impoverished communities in Mexico, really living in what we say local to global. Susan certainly lived that. In the early 2000s, Susan founded a nonprofit organization called uh, Earth Rose. Um, it's, we're going to keep it going. Um, it's dedicated to supporting environmental health in the community. Uh, so I ask that, you know, in lieu of flowers, if, if you would go to donate.earthrose.org and consider making a, a donation to keep her mission going. Uh, I know she, she would appreciate it. While I was going through some pictures and videos um, to get the slideshow ready that I'm going to share with you shortly, um, I came across this video that um, of an interview of Susan while she was in Iceland. I think it was in 2015 or 16. Um, and it really exemplifies all of the different avenues that Susan saw integrative nursing, the environment. It's really, it's a really great video. And I'm kind of shocked that I haven't seen it until today. Um, but uh, I would really like to share that with you. And then we're gonna go right into a, a, a slideshow that's about uh, 15 minutes long. And I ask that you watch it. It's for all of Susan's life from when she was a child to you know, up until her last days. Um, I can't believe I'm even making this video right now. I, um, yeah. uh, well, Susan, we love you. And it's really the honor of a lifetime to, to get to continue your legacy. Thank you. I'm Susan Luck. I live in Miami, Florida. I'm adjunct faculty at the University of Miami in their clinical nutrition program. And I'm the co-director of the International Nurse Coach Association and faculty in our integrative nurse coach program. So I had the opportunity to work as a nurse in an emergency situation after an earthquake in the highlands of Guatemala. And I saw a system of health and healing quite different from the one that I was living in, which was as a med surge nurse at a big medical center in New York City. And it exposed me to other possibilities for healing, for family, for community. And it led me on a search both to become a community health, public health nurse, and to study anthropology to learn other systems of healing. Uh, I remember sitting uh, to want to understand in a clinic 
with Mayan women who were holding eggs and candles and incense and praying. And I sat there as a Westerner with some Western problem in the moment. And I remember reflecting, I'm sitting here as a Westerner. This is not my belief system. Will this have the same impact going into that shaman's office or uh, healing room as for the women who are steeped in this cultural world and belief and it was just the question and how much and facilitates the healing process based on our beliefs i think the cultural piece for me is really where it's embedded in people's cells spirit uh, their cultural models that they grow up with, whether it's around food, healing modalities that maybe their grandmothers uh, brought to the family tradition that it carried down. And I think that when we're looking at healing and whole person systems, the cultural piece is really essential for mobilizing those healing forces within. It allows a great opportunity to sit with that person and really listen to their story. And that's really the art of nurse coaching, is really the patient, client, family narrative. And it goes back to culture again. Who are you? You know, what do you believe in? They're so used to coming into a medical model where we're, they're told, this is what you need, here's the prescriptive, uh, take this list and follow it. And we know that that doesn't work. 60% of diabetics who do a diabetic education class revert back to old patterns and behaviors that something isn't working. And a bigger belief in transforming healthcare is that nurse coaching and integrative nurse coaching could be the trans a transformative moment for both the nurse, the patient, and healthcare. What I say is imagine if all of us were involved in this transformation, how we will really be the nightingales of the 21st century, if you will. And I could say that in our program, we have nurses who have come from New Zealand who are bringing it back. And I see that there's interest everywhere because nursing is really, the common thread in nursing is that we are a caring profession who really our intention is to help others. And so beyond maybe the languages and the some of the barriers that we all experience, there's this commonality. And this conference epitomizes that of bringing together nurses and nursing leaders from many countries. And I think this is just the beginning. My name is Karen Avino, and I am the Executive Director of the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy. We are thankful to have this and other recordings of our friend and co-founder, Susan Luck, to remind us of Susan's spirit that continues to ignite and encourage action for the mission and vision of the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy. Susan spoke often about her observations and insights on topics that are important to all nurse coaches. Those of us who have the honor of knowing Susan recognize the significance of the fire, energy, and humor that Susan shared and will stay with us. We would like to thank you for honoring and celebrating Susan's life. We will end with a song chosen by Susan, Long Time Sun, by Snaidam Kaur, and a slideshow depicting her life. Namaste.
Cruise and Luck in Miami, Florida. And, and we're just thrilled. <laughs> community health. So some of it may be basic, some of it may be advanced, and I guess I'd like to ask how many of you are in or studying?
incredible moment in healthcare in a shifting paradigm. And we welcome all nurses to be part of our program, our community, and our movement. The movement. And, and it's a very exciting time. So we I think being here as equal partners with a doctor-centric uh, audience and having this large body of nurses participating and hearing the speakers, the in, in, in functional medicine physicians, the integrative nurse coaches all together having workshops and sitting together listening to Deepak Chopra, for example, this morning uh, is very exciting. And what else is exciting is the quality of the nurse coach practices that have emerged since we started. We I live in Miami, Florida. I'm adjunct faculty at the University of Miami in their clinical nutrition program.
story that's occurring here in South Florida to give an idea of some of the challenges that we're faced with as a community. And when I say community, it's the citizens, it's us as practitioners and functional health practitioners. 